Hello everyone and welcome back. Today, I'm going to be reviewing the Remet Peacock. This knife is reasonably priced, but is it a decent buy? Or is it something you'll learn to regret? Power through those close-ups and I'll tell you all the details. First off, I want to mention that this video is not sponsored, but Remet did send me this knife so that I could check it out. They are the first company to send me an item to review, so I really appreciate that. But I want to let you know that I am committed to remaining unbiased with all of my reviews. Now that's out of the way, let's get started. The knife I'm going to be doing a review of today is called the Peacock, and as I mentioned, it is from Remet Knives. Remet is a new company based in Yangjiang, China, which is considered one of the knife-making capitals of the world. Alongside places like Seki City, Japan, Zollingen, Germany, and Maniago, Italy. Now, there are two ways that you can open this knife, and one is with the flipper tab here, and the other is with the thumb stud on either side of the blade. Once the blade is open, it is locked into place with a liner lock, which is a piece of steel on the inside of the handle that interfaces with the piece of steel that makes up the blade. The nice thing is that the knife runs on ball bearings, so deploying the knife is nice and smooth. The Remet Peacock is a decently sized knife with a blade length of 3.07 inches and an overall length of 7.5 inches. For comparison, I want to show you what it looks like next to some other knives in our collection. I say hour because someone has more knives than I and he would say that it is a healthy amount. I have a Spyderco Paramilitary 2 here, a Civivi Elementum, and my new baby banter. Look at it, it's so cute. Comparison-wise, I think the Peacock is a pretty standard size knife. Not too big, not too small, just the right. The blade has a high flat grind, and it has a feature that I haven't talked about on my channel before called a swedge, which is this section near the tip of the blade where the spine has been ground thinner. This can make piercing easier, but it also allows you to rotate the blade through a cut without the material getting caught on the edges of the spine of the blade. So let me show you what I mean. Taking this piece of paper here, as you start to cut through it, the swedge will allow you to curve through it. And this could be handy if you needed to do some crafting cuts for cosplays or scrapbooking, or if you're just cutting through cardboard. The blade steel on this knife is 9CR18MOV, and it is a super catchy name, but all it indicates is really what elements are actually in the steel. This steel is in the same family as steels like 5CR, 6CR, 7CR, and so on. 9CR steel has more carbon than its lower numbered siblings, and this extra carbon makes the steel harder and improves on its ed edge retention. Overall, 9CR steel is a decent choice for knives under $50 since it is easy to sharpen and it holds the edge reasonably well, while also having strong resistance to rust and corrosion. The handle is made from FRN, which is short for Fiberglass Reinforced Nylon, and it does have full length steel liners on the inside for strength and rigidity. FRN can be injection molded to make specific patterns and textures, like the ones you see here, that are designed to be grippy, yet comfortable. This material is easier to manufacture than G10 or Micarta, but it is also strong and lightweight as well. If you're familiar with the Spyderco Lightweight series, this is in the same handle material, but Spyderco handle scales are a bit rougher on the pocket. The Peacock comes in three different colors right now black, baby blue, and this pink that you see here. But maybe they will do more color options in the future. The knife features a pocket clip, and it is not reversible 
or left hand carry. And although the clip is folded over, it is not truly deep carry as some of the handle will stick out of your pocket. Additional benefits here are the nice jimping on the spine of the blade, and there's also some jimping on the front flipper tab as well, which gives you some traction to make deploying the blade easier. I like the overall size of the knife, and the price is very reasonable for what you are getting at roughly $30. At the time of the recording, Amazon is doing a sale on this knife, and it brings it down to around $25 but I'm not sure how long that sale will be going on for. Overall, I think this is a great option for the ladies or anyone else who are maybe just getting into EDC or are looking for an inexpensive knife that they can toss into a purse, a bag, a pocket, and just not have to worry about it. One thing I think they can improve on is the way I think it feels in the hand. It is a little uncomfortable since the handle scales are flat and not contoured, but I also have pretty tiny hands, so others may find this more comfortable than I do. So that's it. That's all I got. As always, I try to end with something inspirational, something nice because everything is still just a raging dumpster fire. So my inspiration or cheat code for you today is that if you're trying to keep in shape, you can brush your teeth right after dinner. This will help you to stop snacking late at night because toothpaste and chips probably don't taste good together. So please subscribe or share my channel with your friends. I would appreciate it. Thank you everyone for taking the time and making it to the end. My self-esteem thanks you. Zoling in Germany and Mangia... Oh God, I'm fucking up the Italian. <laughs> Seki City. Seki City, Japan. Zoling in Germany. Maniago. 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 Okay. Alright. How many times can we fuck this up? Zollingen, Germany. <laughs> Keep fucking up the Italian. Dad's gonna kill me. <laughs> Ooh.